About eight years ago, I was in your living room last time and we talked about Great Faith in Great Falls and the opportunity for us of developing facilities here in Great Falls. And through your generosity, the generosity of our alumni and friends, we've been blessed to have over $800,000 ready for a new facility. But we're starting a new project. Hopefully this one is going to finish it. We are calling it Great Faith in Great Falls, Building to Bless. God is at work in providing the resources we need to launch the project. With the Great Faith in Great Falls, Building to Bless Capital Campaign, we will determine which plan will see completion. We thank you ahead of time for your prayerful consideration in helping us complete a ministry space to meet the needs of the congregation as well as the community. Over these past eight years, we've seen many changes. And while some things have stayed the same, there are a lot of positive changes. Great Falls is thriving. Benefis is now the largest non-governmental employer in the region, and other solid businesses are making Great Falls home. We are also growing as a church family. We find ourselves in a position to continue the legacy. We're really blessed because this building that we're in right now was built by people of, of great faith a number of years ago. And since then, there's been thousands of people that have been part of the church here at different times. And we're a mobile community, so people come and go. But it's really neat to just know that the, the different um, lives that have been touched and the, the faith that has been built in this, this current building. And unfortunately, our problem is that this building, while it functioned really well for us for a long time, is really, um, it's, it's not conducive to doing any more than what we are doing right now. And, and just like the people that stepped out in faith to build this building, and we want to step out in faith because we believe that God is not done with us here in this community. In the past eight years, 113 people have been baptized into Christ. Michael Campbell came to Maelstrom Air Force Base from Alaska, where former member Doug McMullen encouraged Michael to visit the Great Falls Church. After studying God's Word, he was immersed, but his Christian walk was just beginning. They really helped to push me outside of my comfort zone in a lot of different ways. Helping with the Lord's Supper, leading the Lord's Supper, doing lessons on Sunday nights, uh, teaching classes, even the children's class which I've been told not a lot of guys teach. Um, and then right now I'm helping with the teens class and it, it pushes me so far out of my zone that I, I really have to take a step back and look at what I am doing in my own life and how I need to change. While we cherish every person who accepts Christ in our Great Falls family, we realize part of our mission is sending the best of us. Scott and Shirley Lucasen were an integral part of the church until work called them to move to Washington State for five years. They're just one example of how a strong foundation of faith can transcend state or international borders to be a blessing. When we were in Washington, uh, we were able to establish uh, more of a structured leadership there. It's a small congregation and uh, had had some, some things going on there. Uh, it's, it's a growing congregation, but I was able to help provide leadership and a structure for the leadership and then also some training and, and taught Bible class and do things that I had done here and, and utilize those uh, opportunities that I had here, there. But one kind of uh, exciting thing that I was able to be involved in from the ground up, I didn't, I was not working when I first went there, and so young woman in our congregation started a clothing ministry that is still going, and so I kind of got in on the ground of that, and several people were converted through it, have been so far, um, and so that was something that I did spent time volunteering and a big part of my life there and the opportunity to meet a lot of people in the community that way. Thankfully, we are blessed with fresh faces and growing families. And the new members quickly become an important part of our church family. So I've been here quite a while and I've known lots of people come and go, but it's been great. Church has been awesome, turned my life around. It's a healthy environment, people that love each other and help each other, and it definitely changed my view of what a Church of Christ could be. We work hard to minister the needs of the entire congregation, especially the next generation of Christians. 
Much to the delight of the kids, Vacation Bible School has rekindled within the past few years and we have a strong children's ministry during our two services and class time. Our life groups continue to be a vibrant aspect of our church life with three quarters of the congregation participating in this small group fellowship on a regular basis. We also have a whole lot of fun, whether we are celebrating together at the Summer Olympics, bonding at camp, meeting and studying, or stepping up to serve the needs of others. And as a part of Expanding Christ's Message, our successful internship program prepares future evangelists as they share the gospel. Ethan and Skylar Bilbrey came to Great Falls a couple years ago as our intern, and both have grown into their faith and knowledge. Uh, I would say that working, working with the church here, and, and especially learning from Scott and Chris, um, has been a blessing in a number of ways. It's helped me grow in my ability to preach, to teach. Um, it's shown me, they've shown me a lot about what it means to reach out to the lost and uh, to share the gospel with them and how we can do that in a faithful way. The church family here is very unique and uh, people are very close and it really is like a family and um, grown a lot just, just watching how the church operates and the elders. and. Still, the constraints of our physical building has its challenges. In Great Falls, what we want to do is we want to follow God's vision. And we want to fulfill that. So we want to be a blessing to those around us. So what we ask is the question, how do we do it? And that's where it comes to the idea of a building. We, we recognize that, that the facilities that we have today don't allow us to be the blessing we want to be. It, it's not big enough. We, we have two services. We go through something that I call the uh, fish ladder in the back, or you could call it a, a little bit of a cattle run that goes through, which really hinders people coming and going in fellowship. Also, though, we don't even have enough room. If all of our kids showed up for Bible class, we wouldn't have enough room for them. And so this tool we have, this building that we possess today, which is a blessing, it just doesn't accomplish what we want it to accomplish and so we've got a vision of a new building because it, we believe it will bless people it is a little different because there's the two services so i have had a hard time getting to know people that maybe don't go to my service or whatever that i'm usually at the new ministry space will address many of our needs uncomfortable when they come in and have to look for a place to sit. Um, there'll be more classroom space. We'll have more other classrooms where we can actually bring like hands in or just other outside entities to help get those people involved in Christianity and see what kind of, what the church has to offer. Without having a big enough space, a lot of those you can't you can't bring in a lot of the extra outside community that isn't involved. It's nice bringing people who aren't involved in church into church to use your space and then try to influence them just with a little bit of this and that and make them realize that it's something that they might be interested in. One of the reasons we came here is to see how a healthy church reaches into the community and, and brings people to Christ and the, the key goal in building a building is not so we can have a nice building it's so that we can have opportunities to minister to people in our community and, and hopefully bless them for God's glory. And I, I think that if this building is going to be a blessing to the intern, it's going to be uh, as it's used for those purposes to allow the intern to see how God's people bless their community. It, it would also be nice not to have an office in the dungeon of, uh, of Annex 1, but that's not really a major concern at all. In essence, what we're trying to do is, is if we ask why is God about this, we know that He's a, he's a blessing God. That's, that's what He's about. And so then we ask, we want to bless, but how do we do it? The tool we have today, our building, is not enough. And so we want to be able to bless people with a tool that is more effective for reaching people with Jesus, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to be able to, to 
to see people mature and to grow and have the fellowship God wants them to have. That we become known in the community as a place that blesses people and especially blesses families. With the Lord's help, we are preparing to build in 2016. Please pray for us as we enter this exciting time of new adventures and ministry. Also, prayfully consider what gift God is encouraging you to give as a partner in this effort to step out in faith by building to bless. Join us as we strive to be used by God to provide a new facility where Christians and those seeking Christ are truly blessed. You can view the plans for our new ministry space, along with projected goals on our website as they become available. And please feel free to call or email us for information on how you can help. We are at an exciting time in our congregation's history, and we thank you for being a part of this encouraging endeavor and sharing God's Word.